Hey folks, TX Sheepdog72 here, and I'm going to talk about police lying and uh, the lies they tell, and, and, and I'm going to give an example of it. I came across this article on Facebook today, um, and uh, from Law Enforcement Today, it's a uh, Facebook group that uh, very pro law enforcement, and the title is An Officer Who Was Recorded Using Pepper Spray on a Protester Who shoved him has been indicted by a grand jury for assault are you freaking kidding and then down in the bottom grand jury indicts cop pepper sprayed protesters who refused his orders then attacked him so there's your those are your headlines that's the beginning of the lie so let's let's click on this article from law enforcement today there's your address right there in the uh, address bar um, this is their website and we see the first picture they show. Now let's look at this picture. Because the video, <laughs> oh, wait till you see the video. But anyway, we look at this picture here that they chose, a, a still shot of the video. And this is where they chose to uh, take a, a still shot. And it shows the girl here that being pepper sprayed. And it shows a fist on the officer's chest. And then it shows a hand over here, maybe grabbing the shoulder. I don't know. It's a great picture if you want to make people believe that this officer, while pepper spraying, was being assaulted by this girl. It's a great picture. Uh, but it's, it's no, sorry. I, I was skeptical about what I was being shown here. So I went on to read further and... Here, we, here again, grand jury indicts officer for using pepper spray on protesters who refused his orders, then decided to shove him. Of course, you need this picture to make this headline believable. This was written by Pat Droney, March 14th, just a few days ago. And, uh, you know, you would think Pat Droney is a journalist, and I don't know what your definition of a journalist is, but, you know, if your definition of a journalist is someone who makes fake news by putting up a picture to support a fake headline or a lie headline um, then yeah he's a journalist so anyway Kansas City Missouri as criminals throughout the country seem to increasingly be able to get away with committing crime with no consequences the script has apparently flipped <laughs> you know you could change this and put cops here as cops throughout the country seem to increasingly be able to get away with committing crime with no consequences right that's the truth but let's go on with this guy's story um, this this week a police officer in Kansas City Missouri was charged in connection with an incident where a man and his teenage daughter were sprayed with pepper spray during a protest last spring this is according to a report from the Kansas City Star and here's another picture again you see the hand I guess what they're trying to show here is that the girls grabbing his shoulder and another hand in his chest grabbing his chest and He's having to pepper spray her because he's being, what did it say? What did it say? Um, grand jury indicts officer for using pepper spray on protesters who refused his orders then decided to shove him. So yeah, we want to definitely want to show this picture, right? Her shoving him and pepper spraying her because she's shoving him. <laughs> Just stay with me. Uh, Nicholas McQuillan, the officer, is charged with a misdemeanor complaint of fourth degree assault. He was indicted by a grand jury which alleged that Officer McQuillan recklessly caused physical pain to a juvenile by spraying a chemical agent at or near her face and eyes. This is from the Jackson County Prosecutor's Office. In announcing the indictment Friday afternoon, Prosecutor Jean Peters Baker said she wasn't given the choice outside of the grand jury process because the Kansas City PD investigated the matter itself, however, refused to issue a probable cause statement. What that means is the Kansas City Police investigated the matter, but did not uh, find any charges were appropriate. Uh, the prosecuting attorney, Gene Peters, from the uh, county there, goes on further to say, Police are normally eager to provide probable cause statements. And we know this, right? Because when they arrest you and me, bam, they got them there before you even get out of jail. Uh, police are normally eager to provide probable cause statements on cases they investigate and they provide them on every other type of case except for these the ones that they investigate themselves against themselves right Kansas City PD is the only law enforcement entity who takes this position 
which cuts off my independent judgment on case review. So the prosecuting attorney there says Kansas City PD provides probable cause statements on cases they investigate except for cases they investigate against their own officers and in that case they do not provide a probable cause statement and they're the only law enforcement entity who takes that position. Anyway, it goes on to say that uh, the Associated Press reported that incident had taken place on May 30th at Country Club Plaza. According to charging documents, the female teen was with her father and friends at a protest. At the protest, McQuillan and another officer confronted a man who was accompanying the girl because he refused police demands to get on the sidewalk and was also confronting police. So, the report writes here that McQuillan and another officer confronted a man. Remember that. Confronted a man. That's what they were doing. Confronting him. Uh, because he uh, refused police demands to get on the sidewalk and was also confronting police. And we know that that's the uh, major issue is the confronting police, right? They don't like that. Uh, video of the event showed McQuillan spraying the girl with pepper spray. However, it appears that he did so after the girl pushed him in the chest. Now, either this reporter is blind, maybe needs new glasses, or the reporter is lying. Because he says it appears that he did so after the girl pushed him in the chest. Sprayed the girl with pepper spray after the girl pushed him in the chest. Remember that. Remember that. You might want to write these things down. Uh, this protest was uh, in response to the death of George Floyd. And... Um, you know, the, of course, there were protests going on all over the United States and, and continued police brutality against people. Uh, and, you know, you go on and on, and it just talks about, uh, you can go to the article yourself if you like, and you can read all the rest of it. Just sensationalism, um, you know. So on the video, Maddox, which is the uh, black man that the police went to confront, uh, can be heard yelling at the police officers about police brutality and his, quote, expert opinion about officers prematurely using excessive force. The reporter writes, expert opinion, and parenthesizes it, right, or, or quotes it. Um, and and then that's just a way to say, who is this person to have an expert opinion, right? Just trying to demean this person. Several officers then approached the line and grabbed Maddox to push him back. Here goes another lie. Several officers then approached the line and grabbed Maddox to push him back. When you watch the video, uh, it's very apparent they went over there to arrest him. At some point, his teenage daughter appears to push back against one of the officers, at which time pepper spray is deployed. Key thing to remember here, at some point, his teenage daughter appears to push back against one of the officers, at which time pepper spray is deployed. Let me interpret this for you. Teenage daughter pushes back, then pepper spray is deployed. Remember, the police were confronting Maddox. Maddox was then apprehended by police who took him into custody. However, according to court records, no charges were filed. Why did they take him into custody if they were only confronting him? They take you into custody, but they don't file charges. Why? Because there was no crime being committed. It's obvious in the video the man was not committing a crime. He was engaged in First Amendment protected activity, but the officers had to take him into custody. The victim's attorney, Tom Porto, said in a statement Friday that the officer's conduct was absolutely indefensible. I would say that's a nice way to put it. And it goes on to talk about what the defense attorney calls the pepper spray and what the police call the pepper spray. If you've never been sprayed with pepper spray I can tell you it literally feels like your face is in a frying pan and it doesn't go away if it's rinsed off it only goes away in time rinsing off is important to get the irritants off your face but the only thing that makes pepper spray go away is air and time Uh, one thing to notice here is that uh, the police did find that uh, two sergeants told investigators when uh, the prosecutor's office was investigating, told investigators that officers are typically discouraged from 
pepper spraying civilians directly in the eyes at close range. That is true. And also, uh, in addition, McQuillan appeared to be carrying a larger OC canister typically used on crowds as opposed to individual persons. I can tell you that these large cans are there to be used on large crowds from a distance. They are larger and meant to be used on crowds. You have smaller cans that are meant to be used and carried on your person and used on uh, individual people, but they both spray the same thing, just for full disclosure. McQuillan refused to provide his statement to investigators. You know, uh, on that note right there, the officer refused to provide a statement to investigators. Let me tell you what happens when police do the right thing. They will talk to everyone. They will write reports, they will submit video, they will talk to investigator after investigator after investigator as to what happened. When police do the wrong thing, or the illegal thing, they refuse to provide a statement. And that's smart on the officer's part because even police do have a Fifth Amendment right not to self-incriminate themselves. But whenever you are a police officer and you refuse to provide a statement to investigators, you are exercising your right not to incriminate yourself. If you did nothing criminal, then what's the problem with providing a statement to investigators? Is it possible that you did something criminal? Now, we're not going to apply that to a civilian because the civilians, uh, you know, shouldn't talk to the prosecutors and investigators because they will twist your words up. But we know the investigators are not going to twist up the words of the police. They're going to help the police. And even knowing that, the police don't want to talk to the investigators? Okay, it just says a thousand things. So anyway, um, and so let, let's look at the video. Now remember, the everything, you know, the police say that the officer had to pepper spray this girl because <laughs> she pushed him. Let's look at, at Casper, it. we're delivering better sleep to homes everywhere. So let's look at the actual point. Now I'm not gonna show the whole video. Hey, who the I'm not gonna show the whole video because uh, here's here's dad and he's standing in front of this car and there's a line of police here and it looks like things may have been thrown at one point and that may have been before the police got there or or during. Uh, but anyway, that, that you see another person over here standing off the sidewalk. You see a car parked here. There, he's not in a lane of traffic. Uh, there are there is a lane here, and there is a lane here. So nobody's blocking the roadway. The police are just mad. They're butt hurt, and they don't want anybody to step off the sidewalk. Uh, is it a law? Maybe. But you know what? Sometimes when large protests are going on like this, you need to, uh, for public safety and officer safety, you need to go in and ignore the little ordinances that say you have to keep your feet on the sidewalk. Uh, but anyway, if we go a little further, if we go a little further, um, this is the initial, so uh, the officers, so the officers start walking over, right? And they, they get close, and what you see is this officer right here reaches over to grab this guy, okay? Reaches over to grab this guy who's not doing anything, just running his mouth. And then this is the gonna be, right here is gonna be the initial contact, okay? Notice that this young lady's hands are on her hips as the officer approaches. Now he's reaching in between uh, her and somebody else to grab this guy that's right behind her and then you'll see the initial contact again he's going further and her her hands are down by her waist this is the initial contact between her and the officer 
He's not pepper spraying anybody at this point. He is reaching around to grab this guy. She has her hands on her hips, and he takes his arm, which is, <laughs> his arm is about as big as her head, and he puts his hand in her stomach. And let's see what happens. <laughs> Boom. Again, he's not pepper spraying anybody. He's trying to grab this other guy. Y'all saw the push. Let's see that one more time. There's the hand on the belly. <laughs> push. Then she raises her hands. Then she raises her hands. After getting pushed, she raises her hands. For balance? To ward off this assault? Because she wasn't breaking any law. They didn't try to... They didn't try to... Arrest her. They never took her into custody. So, this would be an assault. <laughs> that would be the assault. Okay, this... So looking at this, she's not, uh, so looking at this, when he decides to put his arm in her belly and push her back, um, assault her, she has her hands on her stomach. And the pepper spray didn't come out until after she responded to that assault. But the officers will say, and their police reports will say, that he had to pepper spray her after she pushed. And there's your lie, folks. That's how it happens. Um, you can check out the video if you go to the uh, link in my description and you can look at the video there. Uh, the reason there's two separate links is because it's hard to monetize if you show a police arrest. YouTube doesn't want to monetize it. Uh, they say that it shows uh, police violence and apparently YouTube doesn't want people to see uh, police violence or make any money off of police violence, I guess. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Stay safe.